This video is brought to you by Scopic.com. Get yours now. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from UndercageDot.com, and this is Motorola Moto Z Droid Edition. This is their first trial to modularity, so you can add up things on the back of it. But before we get to that point, there are so many neat little features that I really, really like about this phone. What you'll firstly see on the front side is the fingerprint reader. Of course, you can put your finger and hold on it to quickly unlock the phone. Uh, interestingly enough, it coexists with the SoftKey navigation bar, but check this out. You can tap and hold on the finger reader again to turn off the screen. That way, I barely had to use the power key on the right side of the phone. And then there are quick camera launches. You can click the power button twice to quickly launch the camera, or you can even twist twice, just like the conventional Motorola way, to launch up the camera. And what I found particularly useful was Chop Chop to turn on the flashlight. I use this a lot when I'm leaving my office at midnight, and of course you can Chop Chop it again to turn it off. And then there comes the infrared sensors. There are four different infrared sensors built in on the phone, and when your hand gets closer to the phone, as you just seen that, the clock shows up. And if you have any notifications, you can see that, and jump right into the app that pushed you up that notification. And of course the modularity, which is the reason why the phone is this thin. That way it still is a manageable thickness even when combined with the additional modules on the back. The mechanism is fairly simple. There are magnets both on the phone and on the module. This isn't exactly a module. This is a style shell cover. It doesn't really do anything, but you can add that up just like that and it snaps onto the phone so you can change the design or the style of your phone. And of course it adds up to the grip. Since the vanilla Moto Z doesn't really have the best grip in the walls, I suggest you have the cover attached at all times. And then here is the off-grid power pack. You can just snap that on just like the style share cover, and then it instantly is going to start charging your phone starting from the battery. It does get a little thicker, but I still think this is a very practical way to get 2200 milliliters of additional battery. And as you have seen, attaching and detaching the modules are very easy. You just need a little force to detach these modules. And no, these are not going to fall off unless you want them to. So it's a very reliable option. And I think this is a very practical way of achieving modularity. Good job, Motorola. And yes, they are coming with more modules. So that was all the fun part. How is the phone as a phone? Firstly, it's starting up a Snapdragon 820 quad-core processor with 4 gigs of RAM and 2600 milliliters of battery built in. That's a pretty respectable spec, and it's recently got updated to Android Nougat, so it is running the latest operating system on the Android ecosystem. Motorola is definitely known for its lightness, and the system is very fast and snappy. You won't have any problem whatsoever, whichever task that you're launching, whichever game you're playing, it just does it flawlessly. The one part, however, that I'm not a fan of is the camera. They've come along a long way, and it's definitely better than some of the predecessors, but it's still not perfect. While the daylight photos are pretty good, the low lighting photos are not. There are noises, the photos get shaky a little too easy, and the built-in camera app could have had a bit more option than this. Again, they got better, but they still have some tough competitors out there. The part that I'm wildly disappointed at is the audio. Firstly, they removed the audio jack while the Moto Z Play still has the earphone jack. There's now only one speaker compared to two on the Moto X series. And then the remaining speaker itself doesn't really sound that good, so audio-wise, not too satisfied. And then the rear material catches fingerprint way too easily. This is a, one of the most annoying material I've ever seen on a smartphone. But the battery was a pleasant surprise. At 2600 milliamps, I didn't expect too much, but it did give me four and a half hours of screen on time on the full LTE network. With the help of the power pack, you can even boost it up to seven and a half hours. But sadly, the NuGet update killed up the battery life a bit. Overall, the Moto Z is right in so many ways. It's got the modularity right, it's got a great screen, it's got an okay battery, which you can extend, by the way. And it's one of the rare smartphones where you can have the dual SIM and a micro SD card. It's got an LED flash on the front side, and it's also really thin if you are that person. So it's leaving me with the really, really big hope for the second generation. As much as I really like the first gen Moto Z, this is still not perfect. The camera should get better, and the earphone jack should be included in all the Moto Z series, and the heat management does have to get better. But if you want some of the modular innovations today, go ahead, I'm not going to stop you. It's actually not that bad. Thank you always for watching, you can meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and this was the modular Motorola Moto Z. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys later. Ciao!